everyone. In the previous class, we discussed the application of stereographic projection method with reference to roof failure of a uh, underground excavation. So, today we will uh, continue with that discussion and we will see that how we can handle the side wall failure with the help of these stereographic projection method. So, in the side wall of an excavation in jointed rock, the failure of the wedges uh, can occur in exactly the same manner as it was in case of roof except that two facts are there that falls are not possible from the side walls. Then all side wall failures they involve sliding on a plane or along the uh, line of intersection of two planes. Now, there are two methods of the analysis of side wall failure. We are going to discuss the first method today and then we will continue in subsequent classes with the other method. So, in the first method I take an example of let us say the square tunnel uh, which is running in the direction from 250 degree to 70 degree uh, through the rock mass which has uh, three joint sets. So, these joints are represented by great circles A, B and C which have been drawn here in the corresponding stereographic projection that is point or the great circle A, great circle B and great circle C. And as the tunnel is running from 250 degree to 70 degree, so you see that this is what is the tunnel axis. So, this corresponds to 250 degree and this is 70 degree. So, this represents the tunnel axis. Now, the traces of these great circles they can be obtained by uh, projection on to a horizontal plane through the center of the reference sphere. So, you see that it is uh, AB, BC and a C. This is how these traces can be obtained. Now, to find out the shape of the wedge in the tunnel side wall, uh, it is necessary to determine the shape of the intersection figure which is projected onto a vertical plane because now we want the true shape in the tunnel side wall which is uh, the vertical plane. So, this intersection figure can be obtained by the rotation of the great circle intersections which are AB, BC and AC through 90 degree about the tunnel axis. So, how this is done? This is what is the tunnel axis which is running 250, 70 degree. So, we have to rotate these points AB, BC and AC by 90 degree. So, for we should do is first we should uh, have the tracing of these points A, B, B, C and A, C onto a clean tracing paper. You mark the center of the this uh, stereographic net, then mark the north direction as well and then plot the three great circles which will give you these points A, B, B, C and A, C and you should also plot the tunnel axis onto this tracing. Now, how should we carry out the rotation? So, what we do is uh, we locate that tracing sheet onto the meridional net or the stereographic net here in such a manner that we pin it at the center here and make or rotate the tracing sheet on to this in such a manner that this tunnel axis this one coincides with the north south direction. So, what will happen if I just try to rotate it what will happen this point B C will be rotated A B will also be rotated and of course, this A C will be rotated by the same amount. So, you see that when I rotate this and merge this uh, tunnel axis uh, with north south 
direct axis of the net. So, you see that the north comes here now and accordingly all these points they have their new place. So, BC will come now here, AC is here and AB comes out to be here. Okay. Sorry, AC is going to be here. Now, I have to rotate it uh, by 90 degree. So, how I do it? Uh, there are two things which one needs to keep in mind that we need to rotate all these points in the same direction. So, this helps uh, us to keep all the points in the same hemisphere and makes uh, it easier to understand. Uh, so, uh, when I have to rotate this point BC, so what I do is I count 90. So, see 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 and 90 will be here, but then little bit of angular dimension was here. So, I left it. So, that is how we get another point which is B C prime. This is B C prime after rotating this B C by 90 degree. Now, come to this point A C. And if you just try to rotate it in the same direction by 90 degree, see what is happening. You have available as only 20 degree or maybe little more than 20 degree. So, what happens that it goes out of the uh, this uh, net and then it enters in the diagonal manner over here in this particular manner. So, you see 10, 20, then 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 and 90. So, this is the point which will be A C prime here. Similarly, this point A B which was earlier here, so you rotate it by 90. So, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 and 90. So, this is going to be your point A B prime. So, this is how all the three points A, B, B, C and A, C they should be rotated. So, as I mentioned that you should keep in mind that rotation of all the points must be in the same direction. Then the small circle uh, through A, C uh, it passes out of this uh, stereo net circumference after let us say maybe little more than uh, 20 degrees, but then it enters diagonally at this particular point. So, this I explained that how will you measure 90 degree for uh, the rotation of this point A C. Now, this particular procedure it ensures that all the intersection points they lie within the same hemisphere and the projection on their uh, on the vertical plane is going to be meaningful because if they are in the uh, two different hemisphere then if you project it in the vertical plane you will not be able to get the uh, shape of the wedge onto that. So, what we do here now we mark the rotated position of uh, these points which is B C prime, A C prime and a B prime like this. Then what is our job then? We get the great circles which pass through the pairs of the intersection point. So, we already have with us uh, A B prime, B C prime and A C prime and then we keep rotating uh, the tracing sheet onto that stereo net and then we keep trying to uh, find out that what is the great circle that will pass through the pair of intersection points. So, you see that in this particular process see this is the great circle which is passing through the two points which are A B prime and A C prime. Similarly, you have this great circle and the third one is this. This is of course, the tunnel axis. Now, once I know these great circles, can I not find out the uh, strike 
for each one of these. Take a look here. Uh, so, I merge this north with the north of the stereo plot now. So, uh, then for the circle A prime, this is what is going to be the strike direction. For this circle uh, B prime, which is this, you will have the strike direction like this. And for the circle C prime, which is this, you have this as the strike direction. And wherever they intersect each other, for example, B prime and C prime, they intersect here. So, this represent the point or the trace B C prime. Similarly, the intersection of A prime and B prime, it represent the trace A B prime and likewise, you can get the trace A C prime. So, we follow the same principle, but right now we are discussing it with reference to the side wall failures. So, now from that figure, what all things that we can get? Take a look. This is what is your tunnel axis 250, 70 degree. Okay. So, we have uh, the three great circles A prime, B prime, and uh, this is what is your C prime. Corresponding strike direction also we can determine this is for A, this is for B and this is for uh, C. Then corresponding traces A B prime, B C prime and A C prime also we can determine. Now, we take a section that is perpendicular to the tunnel axis see here this is a 250 degree. So, you add 90 degree to that that will come out to be 340 degree. So, I take this direction. So, the complete construction uh, giving the intersection of planes in the vertical plane which is uh, parallel to the tunnel side wall that means on to the vertical plane. So, we have all these values and uh, we have already seen in the previous lecture how we can generate or determine or plot uh, these uh, uh, projections onto any plane once I have it on the stereographic uh, net. So, uh, in the similar way I can draw the lines parallel to A prime, B prime and C prime of the stereographic projection onto this plane and then we can get the uh, dimension of the wedge onto the uh, vertical plane which is parallel to the tunnel side wall. And as far as these angles are concerned angle alpha, angle beta and angle zeta that also we can determine from the stereographic projection I will show you how. So, uh, as I mentioned that the procedure remains the same as we did for uh, the roof. So, we have the traces A prime, B prime and C prime which are parallel to the strike lines of the great circle in the vertical stereographic projection. So, you see here you have uh, this is what is your uh, the strike direction of this uh, great circle A prime. So, I draw a line take any point here draw a line parallel to this then draw a line parallel to this strike for the great circle C prime. Wherever this intersect the two points will be known. Then we can from this particular point we can draw the line that is parallel to uh, the strike B prime which is this. So, that is how we can complete this triangle. Okay. Now, these angles uh, C alpha which corresponds to this angle take a look here from the tunnel axis to the strike 
direction angle alpha then angle beta is from the tunnel axis to the strike direction of this uh, great circle uh, B. So, that is what it is this is beta and then this angle is zeta which is with reference to the great circle uh, C prime. So, it is from the tunnel axis it is this angle zeta. So, now what you do is you have to get the height. So, you see the two angles which are uh, needed that is theta and kappa here. So, these can be determined take a look here when you have this section x x. So, wherever it intersects this b take a look this is what is going to give you the angle theta and wherever this intersects uh, this a. So, this is what is going to be kappa ok. So, this is intersecting it here from b I project it like this here and then we get the base line of this dimension from here you have the uh, angle theta and kappa and wherever it intersects the height or this dimension from the base to this particular point is going to give you the height of the wedge that is being formed in the side wall. So, the view of the joint traces which are there in the northern side wall if you see it from the inside of the tunnel or in the southern side wall which is seen from the outside of the tunnel looking in a direction of 340 degree which is uh, perpendicular to the tunnel axis. So, this is how uh, we can get the height, but then um, we have few more things related to the uh, side wall failure because I mentioned to you that there are two methods uh, which are used to determine the uh, dimension of the wedge which is formed in the uh, side wall which may slide causing the side wall uh, failure. So, we will continue this discussion in the next class. Thank you very much.